You're watching Roanne Relics. They may have dropped it, they may have lost it, but you're going to watch us find it. Sit back and enjoy this week's episode here at Roanne Relics where we always dig up history. As always, welcome to Roanne Relics. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. This week, Chris Boardwine and I take the three and a half hour drive up to Dinwiddie County, Virginia, and we're going to dig around the Siege of Petersburg, specifically the Battle of Hatcher's Run, February 5th through February 7th, 1865. Chris and I both find some great firsts. I'll give you a hint. One of my firsts was a beautiful, beautiful flying eagle scent. But what we're going to concentrate on is one of the finds that Chris found a beautiful New York Excelsior officer's button. What's special about that button is I believe that we can track that down to the brigade level and even to the regiment level. How exciting is that? So sit back and let's watch the story of Chris Boardwine's New York Excelsior button and all the other great relics that we find up around Hatcher's Run. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's go to the first hole. I'll even tell you what it is. Check out an eagle button. Guys, we just got here. Here's my buddy Chris. He's already got him a Williams cleaner. We just parked the trucks here. I just got a two-piece coming out of the hole. I haven't really looked at it yet. I bought, looks like I see a big chicken on there. Won't you do it the honors, Chris? Careful with it. It's kind of fragile. Got the shank of potama still on there. I thought I seen a chicken on the front. Big old chicken. She's crusty, ain't she? Yeah. I see that eagle. Maybe. Don't be anything at all. Oh, there she goes. I want to stay alive. That's definitely going to be a general service button. You see the shield on it yet? I can't see the shield real good. I can just see the shape of yeah, everything. I see the eagle wings in the yeah, shield. It's yeah. definitely going to be a yeah. general service button of some kind. Whether it's a Eagle eye or not, I'm not sure yet. But might clean up a little bit. I think, it, I think it will, yeah. All right, not bad for a first find. There you go, boy. Well, it's been a long time since that button. Chris has been killing me. He's got like 10 bullets. I've got nothing but pull tabs in the button. But finally, I got a bullet. Finally. He's got 20, I got one. That's just how it goes. Sometimes your coal doesn't get over top of it. So let me swing you around. It's a three ringer. Let me check it out. You can kind of see it sitting right there. Come down the hole there, can't you? Finally. That's been a long awaited for. Been skunked finally. I'll take it though. Goodness. See that impression that that old uh, bullet made over the years? There it is, right there. Finally. Get a few more. All right, let's keep rolling. I'm gonna tell you, this man right here has been on fire, in fuego. He gets out of the truck, I mean, just right away and digs him a Williams cleaner. Let's see what he's got going on this morning. He's hunting it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What was your signal? 16. 16, bullet signal. And it's deep, so that's good. The deeper, the better. It looks like a wheel. Shotgun shell. Uh -uh. A button? That's some type of button, isn't it? Yeah, it's a button. Hang on, let me get this really good here. That's gonna be, that's not, that's gonna be like a, that's not an eagle button. No, it's probably. It's too be. big, that's a confederate button or some type of unit yeah, it's button. It's probably civilian. I bet you it ain't neither. Is that, look, hey, let me see it. Is that a New York shield in it? I think that's a New York button. Don't put on that thing. 
No watcher. I guess it's sucking wet. That's a New York Excelsior. <laughs> yes, hey. it is. Good job, dude. I could tell by how fat that was. That was no eagle. So you got the stars around the top, around the sides. That's an officer's button if it does. Uh, I don't. That's going to be pretty, dude. I don't know if this is going to be New York. I, that's the all. That's a New York button. All right, we're back here, a little zooming in on action here on this button he's cleaning up. Yeah, that's New York Excelsior. Got the big shield in the middle, stars around the side. It's the same one I dug there on in Dinwiddie. Are you happy? Woo! Has it got an eagle on top of it? Oh, eagle head? Look here. I, mine did the same thing. No big deal. Dude, no big deal. A little Let's super glue, you never know. Mine did the same thing. It's a three piece. It's got a band. It was supposed to, it's not a two piece button, it's a three piece. Yeah, and it's see got the band the, right there? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Just put it somewhere it won't put it in the We're truck. We're gonna put this in the truck. Good job, bud. There's a man that just dug that New York Excelsior button. But what I want to show you is what it, why it matters what you're digging with. Look at this hole. That's 10 inches. Probably put your pinpointer in there. Let's see. And it, it came out of the bottom of that hole. Look at that. That's an inch deeper than the pinpointer. And I'm going to tell you, you have got to have a machine that can reach down there and get the stuff. And that knock sure did. That 800. Was it, a, it was, you said it was even a strong signal, wasn't it? It was a great signal. See, I'm going to tell you. And the ground is wet. I mean, that helps. Yeah, we got to saturate the ground. But, guys, that's a great find. Hey, we ain't been here five minutes. We, we, we really weren't going to hunt. We're, our goal is to hunt this backfield. He's right outside the truck. Great job, man. I hope you enjoy the history behind Chris Boardwine's beautiful New York Excelsior button and the story of the Siege of Petersburg and the Battle of Hatcher's Run. The city of Petersburg is just south of the capital of Virginia, which is Richmond. Richmond at the time in the Civil War was also the capital of the entire Confederacy. In the summer of 1864, Robert E. Lee had withdrawn his army of Northern Virginia to the cities of Richmond and Petersburg to protect the Richmond capital. Low on supplies and even lower on morale, the Confederate army prepared to make its last stand in the defense of the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia. For 292 days, Ulysses S. Grant and his massive Union army encompassed the city of Petersburg and Richmond in a trench warfare type of battle. Toward the end of the Petersburg and Richmond campaign, the trench lines were in some places 30 miles long. Somewhat of a stalemate ensued during the winter of 1864 and on into the year of 1865. Both armies were firmly entrenched and wintered out the cold Virginia winter with skirmishes and attacks from time to time. Growing weary of the long, drawn-out campaign, General Grant took advantage of some mild February weather and launched a major attack against the supply lines to Petersburg. General Grant knew if he could cut off the supplies to Petersburg, he could push Lee out of the cities and bring the war to an end. In February of 1865, the two remaining supply lines to Richmond and Petersburg was the Boyden Plank Road and the South Side Railroad. These transportation hubs allowed the Confederates to bring in what limited supplies the southern states could still send Lee's army. Most importantly, these transportation hubs allowed Lee to quickly move his smaller army in response to the movements of a much larger Union army. During the early years of the war, Lee had used this strategy very well. Lee would attack an isolated Union Corps one at a time instead of taking on numerous corps at the same time. His early victories were because of his ability to move his smaller armies quickly. Lee relied on these transportation lines. To better understand the history behind Chris Borwine's button, you first have to know how an army was made or what it was comprised of during the Civil War. Armies were comprised of corps, corps were comprised of divisions, divisions were comprised of brigades, and brigades were comprised of regiments. Let's go over those again with a little bit more detail. Let's take General Grant's Army of the Potomac, for instance. An army comprises of about 80,000 men. An army will have three corps. Three corps, each corps will have 26,000 men, roughly. Corps are comprised of divisions, two or three in each corps. Those will have about 8,000 men per division. Divisions are comprised of brigades. Each brigade, two to four in each division, would comprise about 2,500 men. Now let's get down to where we think Chris Boardwine's button, we can identify it to the regiment level. Two to five regiments in each brigade consisting of 800 men. In other words, we believe we can narrow this button down to possibly two regiments. 
1,600 men. The Battle of Hatcher's Run begins on February 5th with a cavalry attack by Union General David Gregg in an attempt to destroy several large supply wagon trains heading into the Petersburg area on the Boyden Plankton Road. The Army of the Potomac's 2nd Corps, under Major General Andrew Humphreys, and his 3rd Division, under the command of Major General Gershon Mott, were to protect the right flank of Gregg's unit of the 5th Corps as they shifted west in order to stretch Lee's line and take the Boyden Plank Road and the South Side Railroad. In doing so, the Union Army left a gap that the Confederate Army immediately recognized. General John Gordon and his men left their trenches and attacked the Union 2nd Corps flank. This caused the cavalry attack on Boyden Plank Road to be called off short of its goal in order to support the 2nd Corps, which were under a heavy attack by the Confederates and General John Gordon. General John Gordon and his men, attacking with such ferocity, pushed many of the Union troops out of their trench lines. However, toward the end of the day, the Confederates were stopped, and that ended the fighting for the first day. The Confederates were not done. The next day, February the 6th, the Confederate Army counterattacked with elements of John Pegram's division. Pegram was driven back, but the Confederate Army countered again with General Evans and General Heath. Pegram was killed during his attack. The Confederates collapsed the Union line and pushed the Union Army back to their trenches. Eventually, the Union Army reformed with General Mott and General Regis Troban moving up and stopping General Heath on the right flank of the Union Army. The Battle of Hatcher's Run ends in somewhat of a Confederate victory in the simple fact that they just prevented the Union Army from re reaching its goal of cutting off the Boyden Plank Road and the South Side Railroad. The Union benefited as well because they successfully stretched Lee's army further to the west, thinning his already thin lines even further. The Battle of Hatcher's Run saw 48,352 total forces engaged, 34,517 Union against only 13,835 Confederate soldiers. Union casualties were 1,539, along with 1,161 Confederate casualties. Chris's button was found in the exact location where Union General Regis Trebrand's 1st Brigade had been staged and entrenched during the Battle of Hatcher's Run. General Regis Trebrand's 1st Brigade included two New York regiments, the 40th New York and the 86th New York Regiment. These were the only two New York regiments attached to Trebrand's 1st Brigade. General West's men, who were entrenched in the position with Trebrand's 1st Brigade, did not contain any New York troops. The red dot on the map represents where the button was found. We believe this button came from the Army of the Potomac, the 2nd Corps, the 2nd Division, the 1st Brigade, either the 40th or the 86th New York Regiment. Chris is right there. He's on it this morning already. Good job. Got him another bullet. Finally got me a fire bullet here in a hole that's just plumb crazy. That right there is almost a 20 inch hole with a mine lab knock, the Echo Knox 800. That is some deep lead right there, guys. Well, here's my first sharps bullet. Way deep. These signals in here are deep. You got to have a good one detector to reach these today. We're talking a foot deep bullets. Mine Lab 800 is doing a great job. There you go. Chris and I have moved out to the field. You can see him way over there. But, three ringer. They're still here, few and far between, but we're still digging them. All right, Union guys. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them too good to be true. There you go, here's another, piece, another relic. Went to a knapsack of some type. Kind of like a J-hook wood, you'd hang stuff off of it. Rang up a 25 in the Knox. All right. your bullet see that whacked it with my shovel a little bit that's your little nick work good morning 
Chris is down there detecting. But I finally own the board up here on the hill with a bullet. All right. Nice. Oh, well, we're here. We're over the hillside. Over the creek. And this was a, a garrison point. The trench works I'll show you in just a few minutes. are still back there behind that guy's building. Up here was high ground. Dug these bullets here and I just got another bullet out. Right here. I'll take it. Fired bullet. No drops here yet. Just fired. All right. Let me guys show you something here on this black mushroom I just dug. I didn't get it. You may not be able to see the details yet. But what that is is a penny. But it's a very old penny. It's a flying eagle. You got the brief on the back. I don't want to get it too wet because that's what's giving it details. That's going to be a flying eagle penny from the 1850s. I think around in that area. Pretty cool. We'll get it cleaned up and see if we can get some more detail on it. But my first. We got one out. Take you in there with me. There it is. Look at here. Little three ringer. Chris is over there hollering. He must have found something good. He's cleaning something with a brush. He's walking over. I'm gonna show a bullet. Go ahead and just stick it right down in front of the camera, Chris. Just whatever it is. It's cold. I have no clue. He's, I'm gonna see it on camera when you see it. Same time. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, that is crazy. Is that the weirdest looking three ringer you've ever seen? Oh, wow, dude. That's kind of got to be carved. You think? <laughs> I have no idea. It's Next like they made a hook out of it some type. Well, it could be a blowout. Does the hole go all the way through? It could be a blowout. And what that is is when there's a casting flaw in the lead and the pressure. See, what happens is when that powder ignites. Let's see if that goes through. And this expands. If there's a casting flaw, sometimes it can force the pressure out the front. Yep, that might have been what that was, you think? Yeah, I, I think there's a pretty good chance it's a, that's a blowout bullet. You dug that down there near the creek bottom, didn't you? No, I'm, kind of, I'm trying to stay away from the creek bottom. I think there's a lot of uh, trash and stuff from cans and stuff coming up through the creek. That's really cool. That's a really cool bullet right there. Oh, yeah. All right, found a good place to end the day, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, man. A lot of iron in here. It's hard to get to the signals. Let's see if we got close enough to it yet. Here's the first one of these I have ever dug. Look at that casing for, for like a Sharps carbine or something like that. That is so cool. I didn't get a bullet signal in there, but I got that. That is my very first. All right, love it, love it. And just one foot away is this. That is what would have been in that cartridge. That is cool. I'm loving it, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure had a great time up there in Dinwiddie County, Virginia. You may be asking, why in the world are you telling where you're hunting? Because if you can go up there and find permissions 
and knock doors like we did and get a few yeses, go up there and find you some relics. It's tough. We had a hard time getting some yeses, but we finally got a few. I hope you enjoyed seeing the things come out of the ground. Here are my finds for the two days that we were there, Friday and Saturday. My favorite has to be the Flying Eagle scent. Never expected that. I really enjoyed the Fatty IHP as well. The Bay Eagle button is beautiful. I just had a very lucky day, and I appreciate the opportunity to go up there and hunt some things. Here's what Chris Boardwine found. The beautiful New York Excelsior button. Look at all those bullets. He had almost a three button day if the front of that one wouldn't have fallen off. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure you subscribe. Rowan Relics, we're always finding history. We'll always have a story to tell. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.